What's good, Githam? How's it going? We can, we can get more than that. Come on. Yeah? Woo! There we go. Awesome. So, you've been hearing wonderful speakers all day uh, speaking about various topics, right? And I'm here to talk to you about music. So why don't we change things up a little bit? What better way to start a session on music than by doing a performance? Would you guys like to maybe hear me sing a song or something like that? Yeah? Sweet, let's do it. But this is gonna be slightly different, okay. I know you're probably expecting me to sing something. I, I look at everyone in the audience and people are around my age. Uh, so you're probably expecting me to sing something that's more pop or EDM or hip hop or something, but I'm gonna be singing classical music. But don't get me wrong, we're gonna make it very exciting. You guys have all heard about these notes called Sari Gama Padanisa, right? Everyone's heard about Sari Gama Padanisa. We've heard about it, we don't really know exactly what it is, but we've heard the terms. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna sing different combinations of these notes, these Sari Gama Padanisa notes. I'm gonna sing five different combinations, and I want you guys to take note and observe if there's a change in emotion when I switch from one combination to the next. Ready? Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> Gapadagadisani, Nini bama pani zare, dere zani zare maare ni sa pani sa da ni da pa ma pa ma ga ga maare re ga ma pa ma da ma da ni re sa ni sa da ni da pa re ni da. Pamagama, Rigama, Pamata, Madani, Sari, Sari, the Pamapaga, Gadama, Rigare, Sarigama, Nidani, Madani, the Nidre, Nidani, Madani. Sani, ni sariga pa mare kani, ni rigari ni tha ma pa ni ni sa, ni ni sa 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 ni sa 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 sare magare magare sani, ni sare magare magare sani sare pa mare, magare sani sare ni sani da pa ma pa ni ni da pa magare sani sa. Re ma pa ni sa sa re ma pa ni sa sa re ma pa ni sa Thank you so much. Did you guys notice a difference in in emotions? when I was traveling from one set of notes to the next, yeah? Here's what I felt. The first combination of notes that I was singing, it was very upbeat. I liked it, it was very sort of, it was energetic, it was very happy. Then we moved on to a combination of notes which was, I felt it was very angry, it was dark, it was very intense. Then we moved on to this beautiful cluster of notes which was almost like mother's love. It was smooth, it was gentle, it was nurturing, it was caressing. And then we moved on to sadness and tragedy. And then finally we ended off on a high, 
We uni- it was very unifying. It was almost patriotic. But here's the cool thing. All of these emotions were derived from those notes that I was telling you about, Sari, Gama, Padhanisa. So using those notes, I just created five different emotions, and we went through them. Now, these are the emotions that I felt. You could have perceived them in different ways, but you can't deny the fact that one is drastically different from the other. And that's the power of these notes. So isn't it so cool that when we arrange these notes in a certain way, certain combinations of these notes, certain permutations of these notes yield such intense emotions. This concept is what I'm here to talk to you guys about today, and that is the concept of ragas in Indian classical music. Now, I don't want this to be a music theory session at all. I'm not here to give you a crash course on ragas or fundamentals and basics of uh, the top 10 ragas or something like that. None of that. I just want to tell you about my personal journey and my story about the boy from Toronto who all of a sudden got so fascinated by the world of ragas. But for those of you who are interested, I'll just give you a quick, my version, my definition of what a raga could be. So raga is most, in most systems of music, including Indian and Western, we work with a framework of 12 notes. So as I said, there's sa, there's two different types of ri, two gas, two ma, pa, and then there's two different, different types of da, two types of ni, and then sa again. So all of this gives us 12 different notes. Now how we combine these notes and the different combinations, the different permutations of these notes give us different ragas. So for instance, we can have one raga which goes sa ri ga ma pa da ni sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa. This is raga, this is a raga called maya madav gola or bhairav. Or I can change the variation, I can take off some of the notes and I can just do sa ri ga pa da sa, sa da pa ga ri sa. I get bhup, bhupali. Or I can go zigzag. I can do sa ga ri ga ma ni da ma ni ni sa sa ni da pa da ni da ma ga ma pa ma ga ri sa. And I get a new raga called riti gaula. So so on and so forth. There's hundreds of these permutations, hundreds of these combinations, and then so hence you get hundreds of, of these ragas. And that's a very short. There's obviously much much more to it in terms of the technicality behind it. And I don't want to talk about that too much today because a raga is much more than these scales. It's an emotion. So I want to tell you a story about how I became so fascinated with ragas. So I'm this boy, I grew up in Toronto, Canada, right? And I was heavily exposed to pop music. And like any other boy, I was really, really into pop music. So Chris Brown, Rihanna, Beyonce, Air Rahman, Sonu Nigam, this is my jam. This is still my jam. It was always my jam. So I love this kind of music. But obviously, growing up outside of India, you know how parents are, Indian parents, when they move out of India, they want their children to be heavily exposed to Indian culture. So my parents put me into Karnataka and Hindustani lessons. And uh, I went for a few sessions because they forced me initially. And um, you can imagine that, you know, for a 10-year-old boy, when I went to these sessions, there was obviously... A lot of, there's a lot of exercises, there's, there's a lot of drills that happen, you know, during the initial stages of uh, classical music lessons. And there's obviously a reason for uh, those systems in place. There's no comment on that. There's a reason why those drills are there. But for a 10-year-old boy who is heavily exposed to so much pop music, obviously I'd want to listen to something like, Tere bina bina I'd want to listen to that instead of instead of that I'd want to listen to this I'd want to sing this instead so I told my parents I went for a few sessions and I told my parents please don't put me through this I don't want to learn Indian classical music this is not for me and they said fine that's fine you don't want to do it no worries but here's the thing my dad he didn't give up my dad is very fast he's never learned classical music but he's very fascinated with this world of ragas. So he wanted me to understand the beauty behind it. So what he did was something very genius. He got me introduced to ragas without me even knowing what hit me. So as I said, I was really into like Bollywood music and, and uh, you know, pop music and everything. 
So there were some songs that I really, really liked. Like, for instance, there was this one song called... Uh, you guys have all heard it, right? Such a jam. It's a banger. So I love this song, and I used to dance around to the song, dressed up like Akshay Kumar at my house and everything. So it was a whole deal. It was hilarious. So... Um, I was obviously obsessed with the song. And my dad said, hey, you, you, you really like this song, right? I said, yeah. He said, you know, don't you think this song sounds a lot like this other song that you really like? And I was like, damn, that's true. It does kind of sound similar. And he's like, you know why it sounds similar? I said, why? He said, because both of these songs are based on this rock called Bhim Palasi. And I was like, what's Bhim Palasi? So he sang it to me. He said, Bhim Palasi goes, Sagama Panisa Nidabama Garesa. This is Bhim Palasi. This is the scale of Bhim Palasi. So I was like, yeah, that's right. There's some correlation. It sounds a little bit similar. There's some resemblance between these ragas. So I was like, okay, that's really cool. So I was sitting with this, this concept for a few weeks. And then I realized there's some other songs that I know which I really, really like, which are also in this scale. Like, for instance, there's this one song that I used to sing on stage all the time. Um, it goes, uh, birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. You guys have heard that song? I love that song. So again, similar scale. And then, mm, Again, so I was like, oh my gosh. Maybe I like all of these songs because all of these are, they come under this umbrella of Bhim Palasi, Rag Bhim Palasi. So then curiosity got the best of me and I went on YouTube and I searched Rag Bhim Palasi because I wanted even more. I wanted to discover more songs that, are, that sound like this. So I went on YouTube. And I searched, and I found tons of songs, tons of Bollywood songs, and, you know, uh, in every single language. But then eventually, I also found some very intense classical pieces. And initially, I was just like, I don't want to listen to that kind of a thing. But somehow, I was like, you know what? I really want to listen to more Bhim Palasi. So I just ended up hearing some of the songs. And I promise you, those songs were equally as exciting, equally as cool, equally as fascinating, if not more than all of these pop songs I just mentioned. I'm gonna sing one of them. You let me know if this is not as as exciting. Mm. <laughs> So beautiful, right? And then I heard, thank you. And then I heard another Carnatic song. Nagumo Mugaladeni Najari Telisi. A lot of you have probably heard this one as well. And I was like, oh my goodness. I just got this entry into this whole new world of Bhim Palasi, these, these notes. There's this whole new dimension now. And hence began my journey with this rag, Bhim Palasi. But the cool thing is, it didn't end there. I thought, hey, you know what? If I like this scale so much, I'm sure there are some other rags that I probably also might relate with. So there were some songs like, uh, like, Sochenge Tumhe Pyaar Kare Ke Nahi. I used to love this song. So I said, I went on Google and I said, what song, what raga is this song? And I found out it's Yaman. So then I began my journey with Yaman. And then I really liked this other song called Manohara Nahradaya Muni O Madhuvaniga Malichina Nantaratevara. Beautiful. Again, went on Google. What raga is this song? Darbari. Now I know hundreds of songs in Darbari. 
Hence, every, one by one by one, I started my relationship with so many of these ragas. And the cool thing is, after a certain point, I didn't even need the reference of a Bollywood song or a pop song. I just knew that ragas are beautiful. So every time I see the name of a new raga, like Abogi, I'm all in. I want to take a listen. Sometimes I wouldn't connect with the raga immediately. It would take some time. But eventually, it's just, you know, there's so many hundreds of ragas, and you're bound to just connect with some of them, and it's beautiful. Now, why am I telling you all of this? You might be thinking, you know, for me, obviously, I'm a singer, uh, you know, and uh, I'm a career musician, so it obviously makes sense. It's natural for me to be curious about music, uh, about ragas, and, you know, it was, uh, eventually, I would end up, you know, understanding the, the grammar of it. But not everyone is a singer. Not everyone wants to be a career musician. Why do you think ragas could be of, of help to you? Let me tell you. One, ragas are beautiful. The examples that I just gave, that ja ja re apne mandir va, so, so beautiful, right? I mean, the versatility that a raga gives you is unparalleled. You think hip-hop is cool? You know, listen to something like this, like, mm. It's almost like we're rapping with these notes, right? So cool. So beautiful, beautiful music, beautiful pieces, and an entry into melodies that you've never heard before. Unparalleled experiences. Number two, you get to discover new music. I mean, we have apps like Spotify and Apple Music, which are listening to what you know, you're, you're adding to your playlist, and they're recommending new forms of music to you. We have an inbuilt algorithm with Indian music, with this concept of ragas. So if you like, for instance, everyone loves this new song called Shrivali these days, right? I'm so sorry, I don't know the Telugu version of it. But to me, this song sounds like the rag Jinjoti or Kamas, okay? So if you go on Google or on YouTube and you search rag Kamas, you're gonna find Beautiful songs like I guarantee you, if you like Shrivali, you're going to love this as well. And there's so many songs like this. So, Raga help you discover new music. And we all want to discover new music, right? We're tired. We get tired of what we're listening to. A few weeks later, we want to discover new music. Ragas is a great way to do that. And finally, ragas are like the soundtrack to your life. Whatever emotion you're going through, whatever mood you're in, there's a raga for that. You're sad, you want to just cry it out this one day, sing Bilas Kani Thodi. Sarega pada nida ma rega pada Pada sarega re nida ma rega pada nida ma Listen to this, and you can just have a good cry sometimes. If you're happy, if you're excited, listen to Mohana Kalyani. Heck, you want to fall asleep, there's a raga for that. It's called Nilambari. It's beautiful. It goes like this. Madhava Mamava Deva Krishna, Yadava Krishna, Yadukula Krishna, Madhava Mamava Deva. I listen to this, I'm asleep in like five minutes. So, as I said, there's a raga to go along for every emotion. It's like the soundtrack that accompanies your life. So when you go home today, try this out. Take five of your favorite songs, your favorite pop songs. Uh, it can be Bollywood, pop, Hindi, Tamil, whatever. And just search on Google. Just search, what raga is blank song? And I guarantee you, at least one of those five is going to be a raga-based song. And even if that's not, just search Bhim Palasi, like we spoke about. And then go to YouTube. Just listen to a rendition of that rag. You don't have to listen to the full thing. If it's a 40-minute clip, just listen to the last five minutes. I don't want you to study it. I don't want you to have to learn it. 
none of that. I don't want you to go through the theory behind the dog. Nothing. Just listen. And I promise you, it's going to be an unparalleled experience. When you build a relationship with a raga, it's an experience that's blissful, and it opens doors to this new dimension of understanding and appreciating music. And that's how I'd like to end my session. Thank you so much, everybody.